All right, let's go. Hello, guys. Welcome back into the channel and for another episode of the Olympics talk. And uh, if you're interested to check out the first episode, go ahead and click the link in the description to check that one out. I talked about some athletes, some stories that are really interesting that happened in the around the first week of the Olympics Tokyo 2020. And this video, this episode is actually a bit different from the first episode. I decided to narrow down my focus with this podcasty show that I want to do with, for the channel. Uh, and I want to focus it a bit more on individual athletes and talk about specifically their stories and their achievements in the Olympics and all of that. And hopefully you find some of these stories interesting and you find inspiration in some of these stories even. But yeah, let's jump into it. So for this first uh, well, the, uh, this first new style of the Olympic talk, we're talk going to talk about Sinisa Lee, uh, a United States gymnast who, well, you can search it up now about her achievements, but you can also stay tuned to the end of the video where I will go over her achievements in Tokyo 2020. And yeah, so some basic information about this athlete, Sinisa Lee, what is special and, and what is special about her as well is she was born in 2003 in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, she was raised to be a small gymnast. Well, she wasn't raised specifically for the purpose to become a gymnast, but she had such a an instinct for the sport. Her dad was someone who knew uh, piece, bits and pieces of tricks for gymnastics, like jumping off a bed or, or jumping off a ramp, whatever, doing tricks and all that, doing backflips and all that. And so when she... When she grew up, her dad was able to teach her those things, and she really fell in love with, with just jumping around uh, in, in, in very artistic style. And so, uh, she used to jump around in her own room on the beach, or um, her dad made her this uh, balancing bench. I think that's what it's called in the backyard. So she would uh, do tricks there, and so and then her parents recognized her ability, so they sent her to a nearby gym. A gymnastics gym to actually start training and that's where she met her personal trainer that has since worked with her Jess Grava and has led her to the Olympics and that's basically her backstory uh, you know she growing up as a this very talented kid who is really good at gymnastics and then getting to a higher level as she progresses as an individual as an athlete you know competing in these in, in a lot of championships and I'm going to get into the special part about Sinisa's story now is some of her challenges that she went through. So Sinisa, as she grew up, you know, she became more and more talented, she competed in a lot of competitions and all of that. So some of the very basic challenges that she and her family had to go through was to really sort out the the expense situation f um, for raising up an athlete, you know, to attend competitions, to spend money in transportations and a lot more as well. And so she really had to balance that and her, her family really had to balance a lot of different things expense wise to raise her as a young gymnast um and so that was well to be honest that challenge really doesn't compare at all to what she was about to face back in 2019. so as i mentioned her dad john lee uh, was an inspirational figure for her when she grew up and, and even more than that she, uh, he was her partner her best friend but in 2019 something horrible happened to john lee he was trimming a tree i think in a yard in his backyard and he fell down from the ladder he was immediately sent to the hospital and after a treatment and diagnosis he was actually told by the doctor and it was it was the fact that he he was paralyzed from the chest downwards so he didn't lose his life, but Sinisa definitely lost um, a part of her, of her dad that she grew up with uh, in, in that day. And, and what was special about that day was it was two days before the 2019 National Gymnastic Championship for Sinisa. So she was actually training, in training. And her coach asked if she wanted to opt out and she, he suggested to Sinisa if she should back out of this because a lot of gymnasts when they were not in the right mentality to do a lot of these tricks 
um, in the uneven bars and 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 everything, and and everything like that. She was, you know, they're easy to get themselves hurt if they're not in the right mindset. So, so Jess Grappa was like, "Do you want to opt out of this?" But she kept her mind within her game. Her dad was also brave enough and uh, con conquered what was um, a just a horrifying truth to the rest of his life to say, "Don't worry about me." And uh, go ahead and do your thing to Sinissa when he was in hospital. So that was, so that was just uh, a huge challenge that Sinissa had to had to go through. And she went ahead to compete in the competition as well and did really really well. Another big challenge came up, and it's a pretty universal challenge. It was the COVID-19 situation, and so COVID came in around 2020, and that was when a lot of critics. Um, she was pretty famous already at the time for her her her, her championship winning uh, records and all that in the country, and um, so a lot of critics were saying 2020 was going to be the zenith of her career so far as a gymnast, especially with the Tokyo 2020 coming up. But then with COVID, with the with the situation of COVID, it became very very hard for her um, to because. She had to back out. Well, everybody had to back out of the competition. The competition didn't go ahead, so she really had to take time for herself. She also had an ankle injury during COVID, and so she had to recover from that. So a long time before she could step back into the gym to prepare for the Olympics in 2021, she actually grew a bit as well and for for gymnasts to grow a bit in her size you know a lot of different things that she she she, she would need to change with her routine to 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 get used to it again and with her ankle injury it was it was very difficult for her and so and another big challenge that i forgot to mention about covid was that um covid actually took away some of her relatives her her favorite aunt and uncle uh, was taken away by covid from her and the last time that she saw them and talked to them was actually through zoom so it was another a sucker punch on her career and on her mentality and and i think just one of the the, the biggest things about about sanessa being so successful and her story being so special is that her, is of her mentality her her her, her mental durability her mental toughness and it was talked about by her coach Jess Graba a lot as well, and I really admire Sinisa for that because, and I, and I respect her in every way for that because for an athlete to 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 have a, a, an, a, an identity a part of her of a father taken away from her forever, knowing that her dad would never be the same after her horrific accident, you know, COVID really um, putting a, a a major blockade on her on her career and on some of her opportunities as well as an injury and then COVID taking away two of her most valued relatives it, it, <laughs> now i talk about it it's it, it's very hard to imagine for a lot of people to go through that especially as an athlete under so much scrutiny from the press from the media from the um from the gymnastics fan base around the world and especially in the usa she's under so much pressure to live up to someone uh who is second best to what was known as uh, simone biles who was no one could top her in what what she does in in, in gymnastics so someone was figuring out who would be the second best um, to pair up with uh, to, to to pair up with Simone Biles in the Olympics and and um, after all of what I talked about as her challenge in the 2021 Olympics trial, she came up second um, in the trial just behind Simone Biles, and she was actually able to top Simone Biles, which she was better at a few sections of the uh, segments of the things that she did. Uh, in, in, in the all-round performance in the trial um, she was actually better than Simone Biles and that and that was the first time since 2013 that's, that anyone was able to do that and to, to top Simone Biles um, and so that was really incredible so she went on to to compete in the Olympics and hopes were really really high and I think another another big big characteristic a big identity 
that belongs to Sinisa Lee is her bond with her community, uh, her community that's related to her identity, uh, identity which is Hmong American. So, a quick backstory about Hmong Americans: they are, uh, they were, or they are still. I think they still are a group of farmers. Um, a, a special group of farmers in, in resident in, in Laos, and back in the Vietnam War, the U.S. military was actually actually employed some of the uh, the, the the Hmong people um, as part of their troops, spe- uh, special part of their troops because they they knew the mountains so well. Um, and then when the Vietnam War ended and Laos turned into a communist-based government. A lot of uh, Laos refugees um, and 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 Hmong refugees flew to the United States, went to the United States for for like for a rescue, I guess, and they were there from the beginning, um, as the Vietnam War ended. So John Lee, uh, Sinisa's dad, uh, is actually of Hmong descent, and her mother immigrated from Laos. To the USA as a refugee when she was a kid, so both of them came from Laos to the USA, and and Sinisa Lee obviously as the as the pride of Hmong Americans and where she was, she had a huge fan base um, of of Hmong Americans supporting her in her journey, growing up as such a fantastic gymnast. And they had so high hopes for her uh, going into the Olympics. I think just this 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 big part about about um, Sinisa is that well she was well she is the the first Hmong American to ever compete in the Olympics. So that was you know already a major breakthrough for for the Hmong Americans in the United States. And just just her connection with this community that she uh, grew up with. Was was just incredible because, uh, as I talked about, her parents had to really deal with um, the expenses that they have to they have to afford when she grew up as an athlete, and sometimes they would have to raise uh, a foundation for her to get enough money to send her around to do all these competitions, and so she already grew a community that was a, that was willing, really willing to help her to achieve what she wanted to achieve. And what she, in their eyes, was able to achieve, and she actually achieved them, which was amazing. Thirteen point six. <laughs> and Sinisa Lee is in 2021. In these past, I guess, three days, um, became an Olympic champion. So here are some of the uh, the, the the medals that Sinisa has won more than one, definitely for sure. So she won the bronze for the women's uneven bars, and she won with her USA team, the women's artistic team all round silver medal, and for herself. She won the Women's Artistic Individual All-Round Gold Medal. So Sinisa Lee, just 18 years of age, was able to top the world after just this seemingly unbelievable um, set of set of challenges that she had to go through and be so mentally tough, mentally strong. And especially the backing out of Simone Biles, she became really good friends with Simone Biles as they as they trained for the Olympics. And seeing one of her best friends on her team to back out um, the way Simone Biles did, it didn't stop her. It encouraged her. It, mo- it vote. It motivated her to do as well as she can do on the Olympic stage, the biggest stage for 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 arguably these gymnasts that are competing from from all over the world. So I think. This is a, it's an incredible story with Sinisa, and it's a, it's an absolute, well, it's, it really is a, 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 a great sight to see her compete on the Olympic stages at such a high level and, and eventually becoming an, an Olympic champion in the women's artistic individual all-round. 
and and yeah and so that will be the end of the video i hope that the story of sinister lee has inspired you in some way uh, maybe it moved you in some way or maybe you just found it really really interesting thanks for sticking to the end for this podcasty style um just me talking about an athlete um and and hopefully you like it hit that like button if you do like it and yeah i'll be coming up with some more olympic talk about athletes from the tokyo 2020 olympics that have amazing stories um, for me to tell uh, in, in 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 the future few days even after the conclusion of the olympics i think i would extend this project on a bit longer and yeah thanks for tuning in this week to another episode of the olympic stocks and we'll see you in the next one